uh, is going to be uh, from the paper Basics of Fetch Analysis by Mark Chouye. Um, very, very nice paper. Um, and this is a power trace of a microcontroller uh, doing an RSA decryption. And the x-axis is the time, and the y-axis is the power consumption. So please put down in the chat the value of the secret. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So uh, yeah, could be. You could be right. Could be wrong. What what is missing here? Uh, so as I told you, when you're doing simple power analysis, when you're doing simple power analysis, you can't just uh, take the trace and go. You need to do some um, reverse engineering, first, some kind of understanding of the device under test. So what I'm going to tell you about the device under test is uh, that it's doing uh, RSA decryption and that it's using uh, binary exponentiation using uh, left to right. Um, so before I go into the source code, which I have here below, uh, I just want to ask you something. Mm. How do we get a device to do RSA decryption? Let's say I have a device that does RSA decryption. How do I get this trace? How do I trigger it? So how do I get, I, I'm an attacker, I have a device. The device does RSA decryption. I connect it, I cut everything, I put my probes. Now what, how do I trigger it? Oh yeah, cryptographic scenario. So, so the question of how to trigger is, is something again that the attacker has to consider. If you only need to get one trace, it's less of an issue. But, but an example of, uh, of uh, devices that can trigger, uh, you can trigger them quite easily. For example, uh, if you send a decrypted email to uh, a computer which shows previews of the email, encrypted email, of course, then the computer will decrypt the email and show a preview. So as soon as you send it an email, it will decrypt. If I send, who is the guy with the, with the, with the ledger? It's Arseni, I think. If I send Arseni uh, an encrypted transaction on whatever blockchain uh, you want, then your device will be very, very happy to try to decrypt it and see if there is some really nice money inside. So in fact, if you're using things like Monero or uh, what's the other one, Zcash, you can't even know if you're the destination before you try to decrypt. So if you're using uh, Monero, uh, you're going to be decrypting all of the transactions that you see. So you just put something on the blockchain and this device is going to decrypt. So this device is using uh, left to right uh, binary exponentiation, as we learned in class. And here is the source code from the handbook for the type cryptography. So let's just go over it. Um, so you start at the leftmost bit, the most significant bit of the private key, and not on common, just left one. And you do square, multiply, square, multiply, square, multiply, and so on. Now, <coughs> using the shared whiteboard, um, can you please paint the multiplies? Who can color the multiply operations? Where is the multiply here? Just color them. Okay, here's a multiply. Here's a, okay, here's one. Here's another one. <laughs> Thank you. So where are the power trace, gentlemen and ladies, is the multiply operation. Let's let's do something else. Where is the square operation? Can you just do the square and let's say do the square and what color starts with S? It's blue. Do the squares in blue. Squares in blue and multiplies in red. Okay. Okay. Um, you're very creative. Okay. So let me give you a little hint. Let me give you a little hint, okay? Uh, what if I zoom in? Does this break everything? Oh, I can zoom. Look, uh, we have here two kinds of things, obviously, in the power trace. There is this little one and this big one. 
Okay, you see there's a little one and the big one. So if you look, you can see that you can see either pattern of little one and then big one, or little one and then little one. Do you see it? So there's either little, little, or little, big, little, big, little, big. So, so, right. So L is saying that the little one is squaring, and the big one is not modulo. The big one is multiply. The big one is multiply. So the little one is squaring, and the big one is multiply. So if we can, let's try and read out the bits here. So, so every time, okay, every time you have a square and multiply, what does that mean? Which bit, what bit are we processing? If there is a square and multiply, we're processing a, a one. And if there's only a square, we're processing a zero. Okay, so now, yeah, nice, right. Now, let's try and see what's going on here. So here, um, there is, you can just write the bit on the, so I see here square multiply. So can somebody put a one here? Okay. And the next one is square multiply, right? Square multiply. And then square, ah, uh, square, square multiply. So it's a square, okay, square multiply. Right, and then square, square, square multiply. So it's zero, zero, one. Fantastic. So you can get the rest of the key out if you want, uh, but there is a, like a shift, so I don't have to work so hard. Um, this is the big, this is the value of, of the key. You're, of course, you're right, Gil. What did you say? Gil said two. Yeah, you, you were close. There were zeros and ones. Yeah. You were very close, Gil. Bravo. Well done. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, um, what about the first four bits? Uh, yeah, so so I think that Magdurian knew more about the device and the test than I did. Because he obviously figured out that something in the beginning. Yeah, so maybe the first, yeah, the first two bits are free. They don't consume any power. They don't have to do anything to process zero. So, so the first the first two bits are actually nothing. Okay. So um, this is simple power analysis. Isn't that awesome? You got the key. And I want to think about it a little bit. So what we did here is we found uh, a general approach of telling apart squares from multiplies. And how did we tell them apart? Because uh, of uh, the power consumption. Yeah, I'll talk about it a little bit wider. Certainly. They have different power consumption. And because we were able to discriminate between square and multiply, we were able to read out the key. Now, one insight I want to give you is this general building block of telling apart squares from multiplies uh, is very, very useful. Uh, even if you're not doing simple power analysis, you could be doing something else. For example, let's assume you have uh, um, you have an instruction uh, instruction cache attack. So you are able, as an attacker, to find out which line of code the victim is executing. That's the only thing you can tell. You can't tell what are the data being processed, but you can you can kind of get this little debugging view on the left. Uh, where is my cursor on the book here? So you see, okay, now he's here, he's here, he's here, he's here. So if you can tell, if you can say when is the victim squaring and when is the victim multiplying, then you can you find a way of discriminating squares and multiplies. And you can see lots of papers about cache attacks where they do just that. So if you can find out when the attacker is squaring and when the attacker is multiplying, it doesn't matter how you do it, you're in a good shape. Now a little uh, deeper question for you. Uh, I'm, uh, let's see if somebody can find an answer. If not, I will tell you. What is the uh, underlying operation of square? So this is a, this is a very very large number. Um, I'm basically doing multiplications. Square is multiply. And what is multiply? Multiply is also multiply. It's the same operation. So, no, why is there such a big difference?
difference in the power consumption if I'm doing basically the same thing. I'm reading from S and multiplying with S, or reading from S and N and multiplying with multiplying S and N. Why is there such a power difference? <clears throat> no, they're basically the same size. S and M are. Once you get going, they're basically the same size, the same length. <coughs> the, if, no, the, if, the if is one machine code instruction, then you have a huge computation, right? Why are, why are the square and multiply? Okay, two reads from memory. Two reads from memory, Lushai, you're getting close. Lushai saying two reads from memory, but I remind you again, this is a very simple 8-bit microcontroller. It can only multiply two 8-bit values. So the way to compute the multiple of two large numbers is what is called multiplication by convolution. So you go over all the bytes of the, uh, you learned it in, in school. It's like this long multiplication where you, you move a little to the side all the time. So, so the, the CPU is reading out all of the bytes of S from memory and convolving them. So it's going in front to back. And also in S and M, it's reading S, M, S, M, S, M. But, so uh, it's always doing two reads from memory. But, uh, so OM is saying it's reading from M and not only S. So here is the thing. If we look at, uh, uh, so this is again, it's my hypothesis. I can't prove it because I don't have access to the device and just not really able to use it. But uh, if you look again at the, at the bus, the, the virtualator, the regulator bus, right? So the bus has two components, has the data bus and the address bus. The data bus is Hamming weight, right? Because two parties write to it, either the memory or the CPU. The address bus, what model is it using? Hamming weight or Hamming distance? Who can tell me? I mean, wait, the address bus is using, I think, Hamming distance. And that is because only the CPU is ever going to write to the address bus. So if it's set to a value in this clock, it's going to stay at the same value until the CPU wants to change it. So what we're seeing, again, my hypothesis is, the, is that we have two use cases here. Two cases. In one case, the address bus, because S is in one block of memory, the address bus is changing a little. So first I, 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 I read the beginning of S and then the end of S, but the values are pretty close together in memory. On the other hand, S and M are in different areas of memory. So when I'm reading one from here, one from there, one from here, one from there, then the address bus is going crazy and you have a lot of distance between the values which is causes a uh, high timing distance. And uh, this makes everything uh, more power consumption. I, I, I don't think there's some optimization from squaring, uh, at least none that I, that I know. This is what I think. Um, I, I know that as a, as a master student, I did notice that the, uh, oh, <laughs> I didn't turn off the, the uh, whiteboard. No problem, okay. this you behave yourself. Uh, there is an effect of the address bus on, on, the, on the power consumption. Definitely, it's a bus. And this is what I think we're seeing here. Again, I don't have any evidence. 